Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing the Seedorf theorems. Okay, right. Uh, so, we're currently in the process of trying to prove the second Seedorf theorem. Okay, and at the moment we're just discussing a bit of setup. Okay, so we've discussed that what we can do is we can take our Seedorf P subgroup of the group capital G and use it to partition up the group into left cosets. What we've then done is constructed this set, capital S, which consists of all of these left cosets of the uh, Seedorf P subgroup, capital H, and we've discussed that the order of capital S is equal to this M portion of the order of the group, capital G. Okay, and the important thing that we should remember about M is that it does not contain a single power of P in its prime factorization. It, remember, was the portion of the order of the group that was left over after you pulled out the highest power of P you could from the order of the group. Okay, right. Uh, so, what do I want to do next? Well, next what I want to do is consider a group action by the group capital G on this set, capital S. Okay, and this group action is what we're going to use to prove the second Seedorf theorem. Okay, so group actions again. Okay, so uh, the group action then by the group capital G on S. Okay, so once again, this is going to be a composition table, like so. So it'll be dot here, and we'll give all of the elements of the group a row as usual. So here are all of the elements of the group, and I'll colour those in in orange. Okay, and we'll give all of the elements of the set on which the group is going to act a column in our group action composition table. So all of the elements of our set, capital S, all of the left cosets of this subgroup capital H in the group capital G will be given uh, a column in the group action composition table here. Okay, so I'll denote them in green here. Okay, so how am I going to define this group action then? Well, the way I'm going to define this group action is that little g acting on some left coset, which we'll call little a bar, okay, and I'll show this in my group action composition table here. So here is the row corresponding to the element little g, okay, and here is the column corresponding to this left coset of the subgroup capital H, A bar. Okay, so just colour coding it in. Here is A bar, and here is little g. So this entry in the group action composition table, little g acting on little a bar, the way I'm going to define this is quite simply, we're going to take this left coset uh, of the subgroup capital H containing the element little a onto what it is after you've multiplied all of the elements of this left coset by little g. Okay, so what we're going to actually take it onto is something that I could denote ga bar. Okay, uh, so let me just tell you what this is as a set. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take all elements of the left coset a bar, okay, and we're going to multiply them by little g. So here's little g, and we're now going to multiply all elements of this left coset by little g. Now, all elements of this left coset are of the form a little h, where little h is an element of capital H. So here, remember, this is the definition of my set a bar here. Okay, and what I'm now doing is quite simply left multiplying all of the elements of that left coset um, of h under uh, the element little a uh, by the element little g, basically. Okay, and what would I end up with here? Why well, will end up with the left coset that contains the element uh, little a left multiplied by little g? Because after all, little a is an element of the left coset of capital H under little a. Okay, so one of the elements that I'm going to uh, act little g on is indeed going to be little a. So I will get little a left multiplied by g as one of the answers in my new left coset. And the reason this is going to be a new left coset, I should just stress that, is because this is effectively just the left coset of the subset capital H, rather the subgroup of capital H, uh, under the element little g composed with little a. Okay, so you could write this as little g composed with little a capital H. So it's still a left coset. Another way to write that would be the left coset containing g composed with a, which is how I've written it here. Okay, so we are indeed going to act on all of these left cosets and take them on to a new left coset. 
Okay, right, so all of the entries in this group action composition table then will be elements of the set capital S back again. They will be left cosets of this subgroup capital H. Okay, so what I now need to do then is quickly prove that uh, this group action composition law does actually obey the axioms of being a group action, and then uh, we'll discuss the orbits and stabilizers of this group action. And then what we'll do is use this to prove the second Seeloff theorem. Okay, right, so first let's make sure that it does obey the axioms of being a group action. Okay, so axiom number one of being a group action says that for absolutely all little g1 and little g2 that you can pick from the group capital G, okay, and for all left cosets that say a little a bar that you can pick from the set capital S, okay, it must be the case that little g1 dot little g2 dot a bar, okay, is equal to g1 composed with g2 acting on little a bar. So little g1 composed with little g2 dot a bar. So this must be the case. Okay, so how are we going to prove that? Well, again, all we're going to do is apply the very definition. Okay, so let's start with the left-hand side here. Okay, so the left-hand side, what is g2 dot a bar? Well, that will be the left coset that contains the element g2 composed with a. Okay, so the answer to g2 acting on little a bar is the left coset that contains the element little g2 composed with little a. Then, when we act a little g1 on this answer, when we consider what is g1 dot this answer, what we're going to do then is compose little g1 with little g2 composed with a and take the left coset that contains that. Okay, so the final answer on the left hand side here will be the left coset that contains the element g1 composed with the answer to g2 composed with a. Okay, so that will then be at the left hand side of this equation then. Now let's consider the right hand side of the equation. The answer to the right hand side of the equation, just applying the very definition, will be the left coset that contains the element g1 composed with g2 composed with a. Okay, so this will be the answer to this thing here. All we've done is taken our element of the group here, which is g1 composed with g2, composed it with a, and said the answer is now the left coset that contains that element. Okay, now why are these two things exactly the same thing? Because, of course, these two compositions that we've got here, one between g1 and g2 and one between a, those are compositions in the group composition law, and group composition obeys associativity. Okay, so g1 composed with g2 composed with a is exactly equal to g1 composed with g2 composed with a. So this element of the group is exactly the same element. Okay, so that means that the left coset that contains this element must be the same as the left coset that contains this element because we are asking about the same element, basically. Okay, so that's why uh, those two sides of the equation are indeed equal to one another. Okay, so let me just get another piece of paper and then we'll go on to uh, the uh, second axiom of group action. Okay, right, so axiom number two of a group action, remember, concerns the identity element. Okay, so it says that the identity element uh, must act on any left coset A bar to give that same left coset back again. Okay, so it must be the case that the identity acting on the left coset A bar must give that same left coset back again for all A bar is an element of the set capital S. So whatever left coset you take of the subgroup capital H, the identity must act on that left coset to give the same left coset back again. Okay, right, so why is that going to be true? Well, when the identity acts on the left coset A bar, remember what that means. That means left multiply all the elements of this coset by the identity. Okay, when we left multiply all of the elements of this coset by the identity, we will get all of the same elements back again. So indeed, we will end up with the exact same left coset. So that's the argument as to why axiom number two is going to be true. 
Okay, so that confirms then that this composition table that I've built here is indeed a group action composition table. So of course that means that all the things that come with being a group action do indeed come. So we can associate with all of the elements of a, the group a set permutation of this set capital S and these set permutations, their composition will be consistent with the group composition law. Okay. But more important for us is to consider the orbits and the stabilizers of this uh, group action. Okay, so firstly, let's consider the orbit. Okay, uh, and in this case, it is just a single orbit rather than lots of orbits. Okay, so this is a very special group action. It's what's known as a transitive group action. Okay, so normally with a group action by a group capital G on a set A, what we can then do is partition up the set into lots of little subsets, okay, which are the orbits. In this case, our group action actually only has a single orbit, okay, so that in single orbit is the entire set, capital S, of all left cosets of the subgroup, capital H. Okay, uh, and when you have a group action where uh, the orbit is the entire set capital S, okay, that is known as a transitive group action, or the group is said to act transitively on the set. Okay, right, so what does that actually mean? Well, that means that if I have a um, left coset, A bar, in my set capital S, that by acting elements of the group on this left coset A bar, I can send it onto absolutely any of the other left cosets. Okay, now why is that the case? Okay, well, remember the way that uh, an element of the group actually acts on the left coset. Okay, so remember, an element of the group will act on the left coset A bar to give the left coset that contains the element G A. Okay, now, you can send little a onto whatever element of the group you like by changing little g. Okay, so let me just draw a picture for this. Here is the group composition law. Okay, what you are effectively saying is here is little a. Okay, so here is the column in the group composition table corresponding to little a. Okay, so here is little a's column in the group composition table. I can vary little g over whatever element of the group I like here, okay, and I can then left multiply little a by these elements of the group. So I am effectively looking at this entire column dedicated to little a, and what do we know about the entire column of a group composition table dedicated to an element? It contains all the elements of the group once and only once. Okay, so I can send little a onto any other element of the group I like by picking little g properly, basically. Okay, now what does that mean? Well, it means that when I act little g on the left coset containing a bar, I must be able to send this onto any left coset I like because I can send little a onto any element of the group I like. So. Quite simply, if you want to send it onto a left coset, let's say B bar in the set capital S, all you need to do is find an element in that left coset, and of course one of the elements in that left coset will be B, and then you just need to find the little g which sends little a onto B, and we already know that um, when we act an element of the group on the left coset, it is um, it is a you know well defined action. Okay, so if you, uh, the way that you can think about it is you can just ask, well, what is one element of the left coset uh, left multiplied by the dodgy, and then just take the left coset that contains that. Okay, so you don't actually have to go through all of the elements of the left coset at the left multiply them all by little g and see the whole set. All you have to do is just look for one element, basically. Okay, we've already checked that it's well defined in that way. So basically, you can send any left coset onto any other left coset because you can send any representative of the left coset onto any element of the group. Okay, uh, so that's why this is a transitive group action, why you can send any left coset onto any other left coset by acting some element of the group on it.
Okay, right, so it has only one orbit, so the orbits aren't particularly interesting for this group action. Okay, uh, what is interesting, however, are the stabilizers for the elements of um, the set capital S. Okay, so now let's consider what the stabilizer of a coset A bar in the group capital G is actually going to equal. Okay, so firstly, let me just remind you of the definition of the stabilizer of an element of the set uh, in the group capital G for a group action. Okay, so remember this is a subgroup of our group capital G, and this is the subgroup that contains all elements of the group. So all little g is an element of the group capital G, such that little g acting on this element A bar is equal to little a bar. Okay, so it's all the elements of the group which, when you use them to act on this element of the set A bar, uh, give back the same answer A bar again, basically.